Hey YouTube, it's ICU2 here, also known as ICU on my other channel. I'll have a link to that in an annotation. And today I want to show you guys how to get a port of the Android operating system running on the iPhone 3G. Now this is capable with the iPhone 2G. However, I will only be providing the files for the iPhone 3G. The method w or should be the same. So uh, I'm sure you guys can Google it and find the files if you have an iPhone 2G. Now this only works with the iPhone 2G and 3G. And like I said, this specific video is uh, more for the iPhone 3G because I don't have the files for the iPhone 2G because I have an iPhone 3G. So uh, I'm just going to get right on into it. First, what you're going to have to do is download a couple files, and then I will go over what you have to get on uh, your actual iPhone. So you're going to come to this website, and you're going to click this right here, and you're going to download uh, the latest version of iPhone Droid. And then once you have that downloaded, you're going to come to this website right here, and you're going to download uh, the ICU2 iDroid files. And then once you have those downloaded, you're also going to need CyberDuck, which is for SSHing into your device. So now, to cover the things that you'll need for your iPhone, you're going to need a uh, open SSH on your iPhone. So I have open SSH. Uh, it's right here, and I'm just going to enable it and turn on Wi-Fi. So now that I have Wi-Fi turned on, uh, you're going to need to know your iPhone's IP address that it uh, connects to when it hooks up to your Wi-Fi. So I have that memorized. If you don't, you can just slide over in SB settings and it'll tell you there. Or you can go into just the normal settings app and then go into Wi-Fi and it'll also tell you there. So once you have that out of the way, you're going to need to have to open up CyberDuck and then click Open Connection and then go up to SSH File Transfer Protocol and then enter your IP address of your iPhone and then simply connect to it and then uh, come up here and then go to the backslash and then uh, take everything inside of the ICU iDroid files highlight them all and then just drag them into VAR so just go like this now I'm actually gonna stop this because I already have all those files but once you have all those files in there you're gonna uh, open up iPhodroid on your computer. Just click on run. And then if you don't have MacFuse installed, it'll ask you to install it. And if it doesn't ask you to install it and you know that you don't have it installed, you're going to have to Google it and install it manually. It's M-A-C-F-U-S-E. So once you have that installed, uh, you can then just go to Spotlight and search Terminal. And then just leave it at this uh, main screen. And then in Terminal, you're going to type in SSH space root root at symbol and then your iPhone's IP address again. Uh, sometimes it'll ask you if uh, you want to continue even though the authenticity of the host cannot be established just click yes and then type in the password by default it's Alpine if you changed it to anything other than Alpine you're gonna have to change it back to Alpine and then once you've just logged in leave that open don't quit out of it and then come back to the iPhone droid here, click run, computer password again, and then iPhone IP address, it should already be put in there from terminal, and then hit next, and then it'll go through this. Now it has one, or it has 14 steps, and I'm not going to do any of those because I've actually already done the entire thing. So I'm just going to stop it here. I'm just letting you know ahead of time that you don't have to do anything basically you can just walk away from your computer and it'll do everything for you just make sure your iPhone's plugged in and it doesn't get disconnected from your Wi-Fi address and uh, same with your computer make sure that doesn't get disconnected either and it should only take about two minutes for each uh, step if you see any error messages in the terminal just ignore them they don't it doesn't matter it doesn't apply to you everything should still work hundred percent so once it's finished it'll ask you to put your iPhone into scroll mode now in order to do this, you're going to have to hold down the home and the power button together and you're going to have to do it for about 20 seconds. And just keep holding and whatever you do, don't let go. I mean it's not bad if you do let go, you're just going to have to redo it again, but uh, just don't let go. Okay, so now that you're at the recovery screen, just keep holding and hold past the open iBoot section until it goes into this scrolling text-like uh, thing. 
So now I'm back, and once iPhodroid is quit, you'll know to continue. And uh, also, once the scrolling text has stopped on your iPhone, you'll know to continue. But don't continue until both have stopped, meaning the text and uh, iPhodroid itself. So open it back up when it's done, and then just click Open iBoot again, and then come back to your device, and then just hold down the Home and the Power button. and just continue holding we're gonna to go to recovery just like we did last time however we're gonna let go as soon as we see the open eye boot part so meaning I can stop right there just at the recovery and iPhone droid will take care of the rest and now I'm greeted with open eye boot and to scroll down to select Android you can either use the volume rocker or you can use the power button so I'm just going to use the volume rocker and then just go down to the Android OS logo and then just click the home button. Now this doesn't have to be in sync with iPhone Droid or anything. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can just start it whenever. Okay, so a uh, little penguin just came up right now and it's going through like a faster scrolling text with a smaller dialogue there. And also iPhone Droid just quit. And this little pop-up saying a new network interface has been uh, detected pops up. So just cancel out of that. And don't worry about iPhone Droid. And, uh, yeah, even if you get messages in iPhone Droid saying, like, uh, such and such disk image can't be found or this file can't be found or no such file or directory exists, it doesn't matter. Just let it run. It only takes a couple seconds, and then it comes to this screen. And even if you think this stops scrolling with the text, just uh, stick with it. It takes about, oh, I don't know, one to two minutes maybe to uh, get through the whole thing. It takes a little longer the first time you do it, though and uh, just basically stick with it and don't mess with it and uh, you'll be good to go okay guys so now the Android logo is uh, up and it is loading okay guys so now Android has popped up and my iPhone is working so I'm just gonna unplug it here so I can turn it into portrait and you guys can actually see what's happening so it says screen locked and originally it said I didn't have any service but now that went away, it just takes a little while to establish that I have service. And that actually says AT&T right there. However, it's in hex, so uh, you can't really read it. It's just in numbers. So displays the time, date, everything, screen locked. To unlock the screen, just kind of do a little short hold of the home button. And uh, it pretty much always pops up with this where it says, sorry, application messaging in process. Uh, Com.android.mms is uh, non or not responsive. So just click force close. That's fine. So yeah, just basically to reiterate, this is only for the iPhone 3G. You can Google the files and it's the same exact method for the iPhone 2G. And uh, I just showed you guys how to get uh, Android on your iPhone 3G basically. So yeah, this is ICU2 signing out. Have a good night guys and be sure to subscribe.